I have these. I have these sunglasses. They're prescription. They're not. You can't read. You know, like progressives. But I can see out. Sometimes when I'm riding the dirt bike, it's nice to see in kind of HD. I went for probably about three years without being able to see 100%. So it's kind of cool to wear these and get your sight back. I'm going on a walk with Savannah and thought I'd bring you with me. Let's, uh, I'll show you what it looks like where we are. And then we're gonna go down this hill and um, see if we can burn some calories. So here is where we are. I weighed myself today. I haven't worked out in basically two months. There was a, I worked out over the summer in Twin Lakes, stayed on it pretty heavy. And then we did some filming, a crew came in and filmed for a few days. And when they left, that's when my trailer tongue broke. And it just takes that little thing to kind of like snap your, your uh, routine because for eight days I was trying to figure out how I was going to fix that. And for me, if I don't work out pretty much every day, I can work out a skip a day here and there, but if I don't work out pretty much every day, then you know, you get busy doing other things. The next thing you know, it's been two months like right now. I worked out today, I did 100 push ups, maybe 110 push ups, and some curls just to get back into it. And it was painful. Like I could feel it in my arms and my shoulders. I have a messed up right wrist. I've just been that way for a long time. I don't know if it's from moving the, the mouse pad on my laptop when I edit videos. I don't know if it's from that, but it, it just won't go away. And it's not stopping me from doing push-ups. It's just something I have to contend with. For those of you that don't know me, don't know my channel, I don't talk that much about myself. At least I don't think I do. I've been living the van life, bus life for 10 years now. I started January 1st. 2012 in Florida. The first landing spot was Florida, Siesta Key. Siesta? Eh, that's not right. There was a drum circle there. And that was the first, it was January 1st, 2012. That was the first day. And lived in a van for five and a half years, then swapped out to a bus, a school bus, because I wanted more room. But I made the van an overlander van. I, I put a, it was an eight and a quarter inch lift kit on it. If you measured from the ground to the top of the front fender, it was eight, I think eight and a quarter inches. But that's just like a body lift included. I put pucks underneath it. The lift for the oil pan and the uh, differential was probably only an inch and a half just because I got some KM2 tires, some 31 inch KM2 tires and put them on it. I loved that van. It could do just about anything. It was all wheel drive and it could go just about anywhere. It had a, it didn't have a compound low. So, so that was a restriction, but I got it up into a lot of places and it made it so I could get out away from people. And I've always wanted to do that. I like going to functions. I like having van builds. I like being around people, but if I don't sequester myself, then it's really hard for me to keep a train of thought. I have ADHD that I was uh, diagnosed with when I was 37, and it explained a lot of things when I finally figured out I had it. So I went you know, up to 37 years not even knowing what it was. And what it does for me, I mean, everybody knows what ADD does, but I think it affects people differently. What it does for me, is the best way I could describe it is that it's like looking at a wall with like 30 television screens all on at the same time and all have audio and all have something reasonably interesting on them. And I'm just looking at that wall trying to figure out where to put my focus. This is a, this is a water, filtered water. I have a filtration system on the bus with Mio in it, Fruit Punch Mio. It's a pretty good way to have flavored uh, water without it being expensive, like drinking those uh, Powerades every day. 
So anyway, the thing with so here's we here we are. This is tranquility. I really like this. Anyway, the way it works for me is, you know, I've got these TVs playing all the time, and so it's hard for me to focus. And if I get interrupted when I'm in the middle of doing something like editing a video or something where I have to think, not so much working out, because I can do that and talk to people. But if I'm trying to edit a video or do my bookkeeping or something like that administratively, and I get a visit, I can't go back to it. It's really hard to go back to it. And it's always been that way. And I think if I keep working on it, it'll get easier over time. I take Kratom, green vein Kratom, and that seems to help some get me moving. And I make a lot of lists and just try to follow the list blindly, like make a list of what to do and follow the list blindly. But, uh, but you still have it and you still wonder, okay, where was I? What was I doing? What's important? What are my priorities? And with the van build coming up, I don't want to mess that up. You know, I don't want to like sleep on the van build and to do the van build, there's a lot of steps that I have to go through in a certain order for it to make sense. And you know, what is your priority? Is it, is it making a video today? Is it uh, working on the bus? The bus has been neglected. Got some something in my sock. The bus has been neglected maintenance wise for probably a couple of years. Small stuff, but it's adding up. I gotta fix this. Small stuff, but it's adding up. Like the windshield wipers don't work, the blades need to be replaced. That's not that big of a deal. Uh, the power steering fluid is leaking and I think I know where it's leaking from, but I haven't fixed it yet. I'm not driving. So I got to tighten it up. I'm going to take the fitting off and put some Tef tape on it, some Teflon tape and put it back on rather than just try to tighten it and potentially crack the housing. The lift isn't working right. It doesn't go up all the way and it's because it doesn't have enough hydraulic fluid in it. There's a hydraulic fluid leak. Probably just needs to have some fittings tightened up. And the hydraulic fluid's a special one that's hard to source. It's like a hundred bucks for a gallon of it on eBay. Anyway, stuff like that needs attention. And so I'm trying to think, van build today? Edit a video today? Work out today? Work on the bus? Go for a dirt bike ride? Have some fun? And it's just like a swirl of all those things all the time. And if I'm around people and they're saying, hey, come check out my solar. and Tell me what you think I need because it seems like I don't have any power in the mornings. You throw a couple of those in the mix and you can forget it. So that's why I tend to just go off and be by myself and with Becca. And Becca's, you know, she's perfect. It's not a big deal at all. What it's been like living the van life, bus life for 10 years. I started off wanting to do this because I thought it would be a way to have my house expenses down and work on some things. So I sold a Harley that I had and a trailer that I had. I sold a bunch of stuff I had and uh, had saved up several thousand dollars. And my idea was I could go up into the mountains away from people and figure out how to do internet marketing, which is a, a thing where you just use affiliate accounts and you set up different like sell toys at Christmas time off of Amazon, things like that. And I thought if I, I was watching, uh, listening to podcasts on it and these guys were doing really well and it seemed like a real thing. And I thought, man, I wanna travel and do that. And so I sold a bunch of my stuff and set out in the, in the van. And so, soon I learned that it would be better if it was lifted, it was all wheel drive as it was and had the uh, more aggressive tires on it that you could just straight up run right over a cactus and it wouldn't put a hole in the tire. So I went back on the grid and worked a little bit to do that. And off I was in, in 2012, living the van life. Very few people were doing it back then. 
there was no Instagram, like hashtag van life, I don't think in 2012. If, if there was, it was small. But I didn't care. I didn't look at other YouTube video people. You know, once I started the life, I quit looking at to see who else was coming into it and starting channels and stuff. I just tried to see what I could at the beginning. And it was Jeff the Canuck and Kyle Pounds and living the van life. And later it became, where is my office now? There was this other couple. I can't remember the name of it, but the guy had glasses and was thin. Kind of reminds me of David Cross a little bit, comedian. I can't remember their names. They're gone now, I think. If they're not gone, I'm sorry, I apologize. But what happened was I was looking into how to do it and I found those guys. And then when I set out to do it, I thought, well, I'm out here. I don't need, I don't need to watch these channels anymore. So I quit, quit watching YouTube channels about how to do it. And, and in the process of doing that, I started making videos in 2015. My idea wasn't that I was gonna come out here and make YouTube videos. I was gonna come out here and sell uh, carefully placed advertising on the internet in such a way that I could buy my advertising for two and sell it for three and just keep doing that over and over. That was the basic premise. And it's a tough market. If you're watching this and you're doing it, my hat's off to you. I think I needed a mentor because I was in forums and would watch tutorial videos and you know I gave it my best I gave it like seven years and never really got any serious traction so I started video taping people in the rigs doing van tours I think my fir very first van tour went live if you go back in my library and check it was uh January of 2015 a guy in a van And it just kind of took off from there, but I, did, I didn't watch any other van life people doing it. And lo and behold, all these people started coming into this space and doing these Instagram pictures of like girls would do ones laying on their stomach with their feet up, uh, reading a book with, you know, the doors open in a, la in a lake or the ocean out the, it just seems like everybody was doing that and eating, uh, Avocado toast, what's the deal with avocado toast if you live in a van? And Gone with the Winds, I watched them for a little while and then they went and got a catamaran and now they're doing it in a catamaran. Those guys are pretty cool and they have a huge channel now. What's funny is I met with them or I talked to them in Lake Havasu in probably 2012 and they said, hey, come meet us for a beer. And I never made the connection with them and I, I just regret that I didn't do it. I wish I had. I talked to where is our office now, the girl too at one point, and never made that meet up. But they started channels everywhere. Everybody's got a, a channel, and so I started doing videos on like how to stay warm in your van, how to get Wi-Fi how to fill little green bottles, those little green pro propane bottles, and doing tours, and like lifestyle stuff, kind of like I'm doing now. Check this out. These Sororo cactuses, see that one with the arms on it? If it has arms on it, you see that? I don't know how I'm pointing in the camera, so I might be doing it wrong. If it has an arm on it, it's at least 75 years old. And if it's like eight inches tall or more, it's like 50 or 60 years old. Pretty crazy. I mean, so these, these uh, Sororo cactuses, if I'm saying that right, that could be 100, 200 years old, and it could be a ton of water in it. Check on that if it's something that you care about. My battery just uh, died, and so I just put a new battery in it. So here I am out walking burning some calories. I stepped on the scale today and I was 192 point something pounds, which is up there with about the heaviest I've ever been. And I knew I was gonna gain weight because I just quit uh, vaping and drinking, not at the same time. So let me, let me tell you how all that happened. I did that Robber's Roost video of uh, Beck and I going to Robber's Roost on the motorcycle 
And at the beginning of it, I'm talking to the camera and I'm looking at myself in the edit of it. I'm thinking, man, you look rough. Maybe you ought to lay off the booze for a little bit. And so I did, I, I decided to stop drinking for a while. And then I was on YouTube looking at videos on, oh, I quit drinking for 10 days and this is what happened. Or I quit drinking for 30 days and these are the changes that I saw. So should I take this hill on while I'm talking to you guys? Look at that, I wanna see what that is. And maybe there's a way to get up there on the motorcycle. Let's do it. The only thing is I might have a shaky camera, but let's go up and uh, check that out. I'm just out trying to burn calories. My 192 pound, haven't worked out in two months. Uh, physique I'm working with here, here. So I, I quit drinking. I see myself in a video looking rough and I'm thinking, man, you gotta lay off the booze. So I lay off the booze. I start watching YouTube videos on people that quit drinking and the changes that they saw just for like inspiration. And in the comments, somebody put this book in on how to control drinking alcohol or something and said it really helped them. And I thought, all right, I got some audible.com credits. I'll go ahead and get that and see what it says. Check this out. This is pretty cool. Looks like a bunch of birds have been pooping here. Let's scale it. So I get the book and I listen to it and it makes me, it made me not want to drink again. So I, I don't know if I'm ever going to drink again. I was just going to take a break. And then a couple months go by, I come here and I tell Becca, I'm going to quit vaping because this is a good time to quit. I didn't want to vape forever and we're not around people right now. So if I'm going to go crazy, you know, going off a of nicotine for a while, this is as good as any situation and place to do it. So I quit vaping and it's been like three weeks now and it was easier to quit drinking than it was to come off a of nicotine. And I started eating a lot because the vape juice was sweet. It was like bakery goods. And so I knew that I was gonna fill that void with eating. Eating, like drinking eggnog, that's out right now because of the holiday season. And I'm drinking a crap, I've had two by myself of the big ones. I love that stuff. So I knew I was gonna gain weight, but I figured if I would quit nicotine and not have to have that vape little vaporizer on me all the time and have to keep up with fresh coils and juiced up batteries and plenty of juice on hand. I mean, I've driven 80 miles on the motorcycle one way when I've run out of vape juice before. Check out Savannah. <laughs> She loves going for walks. She's gonna be 14 in April. She's a good girl. I thought, I thought this was a campfire, it's just a pile of rocks. So I didn't like that I was vaping and I had to rely on it. Like if I went into town on the, on the street bike to run errands I had to make sure I had it on me and I had plenty of juice and the batteries were charged up and you know I did it for about two years pretty sure about two years no did it for almost three years but I quit and I and I knew I was gonna fill the void with uh, snacking and sweets and stuff and I'm okay with it. So now I don't vape and I don't drink, but I put on an extra, let's call it 10 or 15 pounds and I'll just take it off. I'll start working out, it's the first of December. I'll just start working out every day. I just work out there at the bus, go for walks, maybe get my jump rope out and start jumping rope again. 
it, it'll come back faster. The weight will come off fast. I don't really care about the weight. I just don't want the body fat percentage to be high. I think my body fat percentage today was 16 and change. So that's what I got going. That's, that's the last video we did, the story of Ron Moak. I mean, that's kind of a nutshell story of me. And I'm kind of deciding where I'm gonna take the channel and what I'm gonna talk about because I, guys, I like riding the dirt bike and working out and, and uh, viewing these mountaintops. And I think I'm kind of over putting in solar systems for people. I've, that last, that last uh, crowd funded, you know, I don't know if people think that I make them the poster child of my van builds so I can glean something out of it. Guys, I would be so much further ahead if I just didn't touch those things and took on solar installs or other pursuits. I know a lot of you guys know that, but that last one, it just left such a bad taste in my mouth that I'm just kind of over that, at least for right now. And van builds, we are not done with van builds. How they're gonna look moving forward is still something that remains to be seen. I think I wanna make it more, get the sun in our favor. I think I wanna make it more of uh, a festival where people, where stuff gets done, like a van life, bus life celebration, but you can still get stuff done, come meet people, come hang out with people that also live the same life. I like helping people, but I've seen that there's some times that I do it and uh, I just might be misplacing my best efforts. I've learned a lot about that. Anyway, I don't know, maybe this should have been a live stream, kind of a diatribe or a monologue, but here I am, 10 years into the van life, bus life, and I can't imagine living any other way at this point. Anybody can do it any way they want, but I really like doing it this way. And I've got good company and I've got good things to keep me busy with my with my weights and my motorcycles man this is such a good life I don't know what you're watching this what your life is like if you're dealing with strife on different levels I think all of us are to some degree and if you're considering living this way to think it's going to be your answer I'll tell you this you got to be okay with your situation in a lot of different ways in order to be okay coming out here because otherwise if you're gonna be neurotic and I can say that because I'm sometimes neurotic if you're gonna be neurotic about little problems in your life you're just gonna transfer over and be neurotic about things in this life dumping your porta potty sourcing drinking water uh, making money you gotta get your finances okay and when you see me do reviews on this channel guys I like doing reviews sometimes some of the people I work with are really cool uh, but also, you know, I, I really like this lifestyle and I got to pay the bills. And so when I'm putting these reviews on, I want it to be a good review that you get something out of, but also bear in mind that I got to generate commerce or else, you know, I'm not in retirement age and also I'm not on a trust fund or anything like that. People kind of think maybe because I've been doing this a while that I'm some kind of YouTube mogul, but I'm not complaining. Let's get back to, this is the ADD kicking in. Let's get back to what I was saying about you. If you're uncomfortable in your situation and you're contemplating a traveling lifestyle being right for you, I would say that look at where I am, look at how I seem to you, like what my personality seems like to you and think about would this kind of correlate with what your kind of personality is like already. You know, I'm not a big, you know, Ron is this long through hiker. I don't really care about that kind of stuff. I'd rather dirt bike, but I do like the serenity and the tranquility. If I'm totally by myself, I can get away with it for about three days. I was watching these foresty forest videos and I don't know exactly his life. I've only watched a couple of them. I'm starting to watch more Van life uh, channels to get a feel for what other people are doing and it seems like that guy's up in the mountains doing these bushwhacking so if you don't know what bushwhacking is i learned it watching his channel it's like you're not on a trail but you're actually whacking bushes to get through it i guess is the idea but he's up by himself it seems like in a van you tell me in the comments if i'm wrong about that 
and he digs it. And for me, if I'm by myself for about three days, I start getting stir crazy. And I start, you know, I have to get on one of the motorcycles and head into town and just bring my laptop, bring an audio book and a headset, whatever, and work, but just go buy a sandwich and have a conversation with somebody at the register and have that human interaction. So you can still be in tranquility and reach out and be around people when you want to. I prefer being out here uh, away from mass people and mass thinking because I can't concentrate if I'm around a bunch of people and then I start losing myself and wondering where the hell, what the hell I was doing. Like, what are you doing with your life, man? Have you, have you sat down and paid your bills? Have you read your emails? Have, is, is there some catastrophe going on on the administrative side of your life that you haven't addressed? because uh, your mind has been someplace else. I started thinking like that, the neurotic thing I was talking about, but if you've got a way to support yourself financially, don't come out here and say, I'm gonna come out here and then I'm gonna figure it out. Unless you got a big lump sum in the bank that you can chip away at, figure it's gonna cost, I, I always say that it, it costs you in numbers of, of 600s, $600 to barely get by, $1,200 to be all okay, and $1,800 to kind of be doing good. So if you could support yourself, you're gonna need tires at some point, stuff is gonna break, you're gonna have suffer disappointments that are gonna have to be fixed through financial uh, repairs then I would say give it a try. But if you're gonna come out here and say, oh, I'm gonna sell jewelry on the road or I'm gonna start a YouTube channel or an Instagram channel and it's gonna be great, uh, my, my thousand dollars will get me far enough, it's probably uh, you're setting yourself up for, for hardship. But if that's not the case, if you've got a way to support yourself, don't worry about what kind of rig you have. It could be a station wagon with some Reflectics you could get a Home Depot and put in the windows and get a little sleeping bag and a little sleeping pad and a little Not a Coleman stove those little uh, gas one stoves. that are like 25 bucks with the butane cans and a cooler and You're good. I mean, it's not ideal, but You could build from there. My van was two grand the Astro van I paid two thousand dollars for it and that needed repairs, but I did the repairs myself that's another thing. Get yourself a good set of tools. One of those like fold up cases that's got the sockets and the crescent wrenches and the screwdrivers and, and the wrenches. Start with that if you don't have anything. And also start with, uh, let's talk about this. Start with a drill and a circular saw or what you would call a skill saw. That's the, that's the name brand. Kind of like Kleenex, but it's a hand tissue skill saw is a circular saw. If you have a drill and a circular saw, you could build anything because the whole foundation of carpentry is you cut something and you fasten it. And with those two tools, you can do that. I ain't saying it's gonna be some Steinway, but you could do it. So start basic and come out here and it's a lot of fun. And don't be mad if I don't meet up with you all the time. We can meet up and do stuff but I'll give you your peace. We'll give each other, you know, our peace. All right, I'm gonna start heading back to the bus. Let me know in the comments, you know, your thoughts on van life, bus life. And um, if you're messing with trying to like quit, I know not, not that many people vape, but I, I don't care if people drink. It's not, none of my business what people do, but if you uh, have something, you're trying to cross over to the other side and, and just like, exit from something that's not healthy in your life. Talk to me about it. I just went through it and I'm thankful that I went through it. I'm still probably going through it. I'm still going through like little waves of being a little on the edgy side, a little on the wrapped up tight side. But uh, you know, I'm telling myself from these books I'm listening to, every time I, I want my vape or I get ready to get on the dirt bike, I'm using it because it's plated and it's legal on the streets to go into town you know, my routine would be grab my phone, grab my wallet, grab my vape. And so in my, I still have that wired up. And in the book it says, when you go to grab your vape, that's when you tell yourself, 
Isn't it great that I don't have to worry about wrangling that stuff together every time I go someplace? I don't have to pay for it. I don't have to keep up with the vape juice. So that's what I'm doing. I'm doing what the book says to do and it's working pretty good. I think in a year or pardon me, in a month or two, it should be good. In fact, I'll see you guys. If you want to go, if, if there's going to be a Scully Palooza, I'll see you down there and I'll be filming uh, and, and notice the, my energy level that I don't have a vape with me. Maybe I'm clearer eyed and, and so forth. And, but I don't care if you if you got a cup full of a, some punch with a little vodka in it or something, don't let that dissuade you from coming over and saying hello. Cause that's the time to do it. That's when I like get up for let's go do it. And then the van build, I haven't been talking about it lately because I don't have a, I don't have facts nailed down and I don't like talking about stuff and not coming through with what I say. So when I get facts nailed down, we'll talk about it. But the van build is live and well, it's just living in this day and age, there's been a lot of things that um, we didn't have to take into consideration a few years ago that we have to account for now. I think it's probably a good place to end it. Thanks for uh, listening to me ramble. Hope you're doing well. Let me know in the comments uh, your thoughts on, on the stuff we talked about. All right, I'll see you.